This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Ja, hier kommt's number 17 of the Monocast. Hey, welcome back, Leon. How was your vacation? Oh, it was pretty good until I had a small injury, which cut my vacation in half. But besides that, it was wonderful. It, it cut your bone in half a bit. <laughs> no, luckily not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Thomas got a, did a pretty good job in, in replacing you. Oh, yeah. Uh, he did. In the last Mordecast. Um Not that you could be ever replaced. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good to have you back. Uh, in one piece. That yeah. is. Um, Luckily. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome, dear listener, back to the Modicast. We're having a special episode today. Yeah. Yet another one. And this one is all about, no, not all, but 90% about Modicon, mainly in a longish interview. Hopefully, it's not boringly longish. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, it's a, just a lot of things to talk, talk about. And I think it's, it's, pretty interesting to me anyway um yeah we have a little list of of things to discuss before we go there yep. and like always we start with the latest and greatest from the modic world and that is obviously number 3.1 yay <laughs> uh good job team um not only has 3.1 been released, but, but also the next uh, iterations are already in the pipeline. <laughs> and uh, we, we, co we come to that in the date uh, or coming up section yeah. after the interview. Already. <laughs> Yo, what else? Um, yeah, there's been a super interesting post in the forum. It's by uh, Joey Keller from uh, Jung Jungary. Hungry, hungry. <laughs> yeah, our friend, uh, friend Joey. Yeah. Um, yeah, he talked about, um, or he answered a question about Amazon SES, mm -hmm. how to best set that up, and, and he came up with a super comprehensive forum post about way more than just setting up SES, but but sending emails in general, with queuing and send rates yeah, and optimization, and even about setup of cron jobs uh, relative to each other, the timing of cron jobs against each other. Yeah, it was really, um, really, really good. I think that will definitely make it to the knowledge base. It will. <laughs> okay, good to hear that. Yeah, uh, another thing that came up on the interwebs was uh, another blog post by Ruth about Ooh, yeah. community infrastructure mm -hmm. in the broader sense, and that also included finance, which uh, in the past... We did not really cover on the community side. We just said, hey, 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 Acquia, yeah, give us some money. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, no, but uh, we, we were not at the point where we would handle that ourselves. But we were making progress there. Yeah. And uh, also things like the first working groups with mm -hmm. the community structures and stuff like that. Yeah, good read. And both of those things that we just mentioned will be linked in the show notes as, as always you expect yeah, yeah talking about a good read there's also a post in the forums about the google season of dogs what did you read did you write that i did not <laughs> ruth wrote that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so just to give a like small update about the google season of dogs we're finally like through the entire application phase and we get two new faces on the one hand it's a uh, favor kelvin And she will be um, taking part in the knowledge base and helping me out. Mm -hmm. And we also got uh, Swati Tucker, and she will be giving a hand in the end user documentation. And currently, we are in the phase of um, like getting the applicants and the project together and explaining what their job will be. Mm -hmm. And on the 14th of September, the, the working phase will begin. So it's all, all si signed off by, by Google? It's Set already it signed off. Awesome. And yeah, yeah, we're super happy to okay. have her. And um, I'm, for my part, I'm super excited yeah. to work. Welcome both to the Mordic community. <laughs> um, and how long will they be, they be uh, around? Uh, until the 30th of November. Then the project will be finished. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopef hopefully we will keep them on board but, <laughs> but that's of course the, the paid portion by, by google and we'll see what what follows so warm welcome to both yeah and then um the main topic for today as we said is the modicon yeah the reason is that um 
the call for paper has now been released. Oh, yeah. Uh, and behind the curtains, a ton of things is going on because mm -hmm. it's not too long. We have a date. That's uh, November 17th. We know it is a worldwide conference for Mordic. So that's what it is. We also know it's all virtual in 2020, yeah. which is the first. <laughs> um And we did talk about, or we did briefly mention it a couple of times, but this interview with Ruiz is really much more in-depth. Mm -hmm. And um, before we go there, I, I'd like to ask you, because Tell I know me. you've not been involved so far and you also didn't li listen to the interview, uh, what's, what's your take on it? Without taking anything for granted, why do you think would we want to have such a thing as a Mordica and, and, and what, what's the value, especially in this all virtual version? Uh, yeah. Um, thinking of going all virtual, it's not as good as meeting up in personal, in my opinion, mm. but it is what it is. Like Corona. <laughs> yeah. Corona. Just say Corona. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot, a lot of dense input. Also for people who are interested in Mordic and um, think about using it, but also the common user of Mordic could also be very interested in attending and learning about new topics and meeting new people. Mm. And yeah, it offers a lot of lot of, of values. And oh, whoa, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. that, that's sure. what, what we aim to do. I mean, the, when we say we want to do that, it's not just because we want a an event on the checklist it's because we r really want to fill it with life not sh yeah. not say it's all awesome but but make sure it is actual of actual value for for the people that is meant for and you already mentioned too that that is current users quote unquote mm -hmm. and, and potential future users who are currently considering modic for whatever yeah. that is two very different target groups already and and there's more and yeah let's let's um Listen into the interview because that's one of the things that the Ruth and I discussed mm -hmm. in the conversation. Um, there's a ton of other things, and, and I agree with you. It's not the same as as an in, on premise in person yeah. event, but it has a lot of upside, upsides too. Like like uh, we can be truly global. We don't ex exclude anybody body for travel costs or visa uh, reasons or, yeah. or whatever. That's good. Um, so we'll see how good it really goes and then what a future version can look like without going back to the old uh, habits uh, <laughs> which had some drawbacks to you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Or let's... Yeah, let's, let's hop into the interview. Take a listen. Talk to you later. There we go. Welcome back, Ruth. You're the first one to be on the... Uh, Mordecast for the second time, so you're a regular now. Welcome. Ah, thank you. Yeah, it seems like a really long time ago that we did that recording. Oh, absolutely. It was the early days. We had some some trouble with the audio quality and everything, and things have changed too. You're now the project lead. Uh, once again, congratulations for that. Yeah, thank you. It's been an interesting journey over the last year or so. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah, it's been like a year. I don't. I'm not sure, but. Quite a while, anyway. Um, yeah, the thing we want to talk about today is specifically a small portion of your work, uh, and that's the Morticon and the fact that we now have the first public thing for the Morticon, and that is a call for papers. Um, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's high time. Um, we are now looking for speakers on the Morticon. We're not selling tickets yet or anything, but, but we want to get... Our tracks on track. So uh, yeah, let's let's back up a little bit and uh, talk about what is Mordicon. We've mentioned it on the podcast a couple of times, but let's let's do the full picture. What is Mordicon in the first, first place? Yeah, so it's the official world conference, I guess, is the best way of explaining it for the Mordic community, and. Initially, we were planning to be an in-person conference, but with everything happening with COVID and all the uncertainty, we just decided quite early on that it would make much more sense for it to be completely online. And that would also enable a lot more of our global community to take part as speakers, but also as attendees. So um, we 
went a backwards and forwards a bit on the date, but we've now settled on the 17th of November and it's going to be completely online. And this is something that's very much been created by the community. So there's been a lot of involvement um, from people in different teams all over the world helping us bring together, well, what should Multicon look like? Um, what kind of track should we have? Should we have it multilingual? Um, so it's been a real community effort. It's been really great to see people um, get energized behind that idea. Yeah, as bad as, as it is with the whole situation, but, but being forced to be all online really unleashed the power of, of the global community and, and it's, it's going to have an impact going forward, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, I think it's great that it means people can also um, have the same experience you don't feel like a sort of second class citizen yeah. just because you're only joining like watching later you know everybody has the same experience yeah it's funny i, I just last week i joined a hybrid uh, event and uh, it felt okay from the outside but but um not 100 sure and i haven't talked to the organizers yet but let, let's uh, st uh stick with with the general ideas first uh, um when we say glo global official conference uh can you can you talk about the purpose why why are we doing the, that and, and who are we doing it for yeah our purpose in the community has been about helping people to succeed with mortic that's been our kind of general vision for the project this year and that sort of cascades down into this event but we have lots of different um, audience groups, lots of different people that have an interest in Mortic. So we have to also bear that in mind. So we're looking at people who use Mortic. So the, the marketers who are actually using it on a day to day basis. We're looking at people who kind of build the technology stack. So the administrators or the people who are having to do all of the stuff behind the scenes to make the architecture work and integrate with other tools and we're looking at people who already use Mortic or who are already supporting Mortic and people who are completely new oh yeah so we're hoping to have some talks that are aimed at people who don't really know much about Mortic or marketing automation And we've also got to consider a bit like you mentioned, Eki, we've got people for whom English is their first or maybe a confident language they speak. But we've got a lot of people around the world for where that isn't the case. And so we are really hoping to um, energize our local communities to find people who'd be willing to step up as a track chair to manage a track that is perhaps just in Portuguese or just in Japanese or just yeah. in German um, so that we have talks that people can engage with where English maybe isn't their strongest language. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot of audiences. And when I think about people who use Mordic as a marketer, that, that already is two groups. One, one is the actual company that, that is marketing a product And the other is the marketing agency that, that is just using a marketing automation tool and uh, is is really a pro in our sense, but, but, but we are addressing all of them. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it, that's the aim. But ultimately, it depends on what comes in in the call for papers, really, as to how much of that we can address. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're kind of shooting for the stars. And we're definitely... Um, open for people to submit whatever they feel is going to be relevant and interesting for any of those audiences um, in our call for papers. Yeah, do you want to talk about that a little bit more? How would I apply for giving a talk? Yeah, so we have a uh, call for speakers where you can um, submit your session and we can put that in the show notes, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. And It gives you all the information on there about what the conference is. It tells you the kind of uh, talks that we're looking for. So we've proposed tracks along the lines of growing a business with Mortic, using Mortic with e-commerce, developing with Mortic, marketing strategy, 
marketing automation best practice, open source and community. So that, that's quite a wide range there in terms of the tracks that we're looking at. And if you've never spoken before at conferences, we've also shared some resources that you might find useful to help you write your pitch, but also to help you prepare. Mm-hmm. Um And we have a Slack channel where people can ask for help if they've got any questions about submitting a a, um, proposal. And that is, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what we called it, Multicon-help, where people can um, just kind of bounce some ideas or ask uh, ask questions. And the form is pretty simple. You just choose um, the track that you think it fits best in, Mm -hmm. the language that you're planning to speak in, And then whether it's going to be a full session, so a full session is half an hour plus 10 minutes Q&A, or a lightning talk, which is five minutes. Oh, cool. So that's the two formats that we do, is that it? Yeah, at the moment, that's what we've proposed, yeah. Yeah, Very cool. like it. Uh, And and regarding the international audience, uh, we also have not only the issue of of language, but uh, but also of time zones. So there will yeah. be some, some sort of kickoff in, in, at some point in the 24 hours. But by then? Yeah, so what we're planning to do is that we will start it at, a, it has to start at a certain time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably going to be starting in the morning in Europe. Mm-hmm. But it will then um, continue throughout the night, basically, um, because there will be some people for whom that time is not a good time. Um, And what we're trying to do is to find times to schedule based on the time zone of the speaker where possible. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be really interesting. And I have in the last couple of months seen a lot of conferences, but but none as global as we are. I think we're we're pretty advanced in that respect. Yeah. 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 Um, Now, you did talk about the different... Uh, categories or, or tracks maybe even um and and the variety of topics but but in in general uh what what can people expect what sort of um value would would uh, attendees get out of, out of uh the conference well i think it's a great opportunity for people to come together and just share their love for Maltic and get to know other people in the community obviously it will be a place where we can share news that may not have been shared yet so we may choose to hold some things back and announce them at Morticon for example Mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be some talks that maybe haven't been given anywhere else and and I certainly find attending conferences like this I always come away with something that that I that's actionable that I can put into place as soon as I leave and I think that's something that is really um important when going to this kind of conference um and also we are looking at uh technical talks that actually help people do more with mortic so it might be exploring areas of mortic that aren't traditionally used that well or case studies explaining how something has been done you know in a in a um in a enterprise setting or um, yeah, just like stretching the boundaries of what you think might be possible with Mortic. Mm. Um, and also for those people who use Mortic but perhaps have never got involved with the community, we're also hoping to have some talks about what it's like to be involved in the community and how Mortic is actually built. Yeah. Uh, because that can sometimes be a little bit hidden oh, if yeah. you aren't if you aren't currently contributing. So, yeah. And then obviously you mentioned agency. So we do want to encourage um, people to share talks around how they've built a business around Mortic. We know that there are some pretty big businesses now that are completely based around Mortic. And so sharing their successes, sharing the things they've learned will also hopefully inspire and help others. Yeah, or, or, or inspiring freelancers who consider going on board with, with Mordic. I think that's also part of the ecosystem that's important. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And making, you know, being clear that it is possible to build a business around this tool yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. again, that comes back to understanding how open source works and then what the yeah. potential is for Mordic too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so <laughs> the the simple question, what do I have to pay if I want to attend Mordicon? Do we know already? 
So what we've been looking at is having a suggested ticket price. Mm -hmm. And I think at the moment we're looking at around about $20. But having we're planning to do our ticketing through Open Collective. So we now have Open Collective as a way to raise funds and spend funds for the community. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to have a flexible ticketing process. So we say like the the ticket price is $20, but you can choose what you pay. So you may only be able to afford $5 and that's fine. Maybe you can only afford 10. Maybe you want to pay more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're thinking at the moment to be as inclusive, inclusive as possible. And we're also planning to have um, various uh, scholarships or uh, tickets available. Yeah. We may even be running some competitions for people who are contributing in the community and stuff we haven't really bottomed all of that out yet yeah yeah but i, th I think be, i think being inclusive or in a global event is an important aspect it's just not the same for people in developing countries as it is in, in say europe or north america yeah. yeah absolutely and for some people their companies will cover the cost and for others mm. they won't because yeah. if you're a freelancer it's not only the cost of the ticket it's also the cost of taking that whole day out of your time and that's a lot of money if you're a yeah. freelancer yeah. so we're also very mindful of that so yeah. and of course we love to have students on board and everything um, yeah absolutely the more people we can get on board and tell about more tick the better yeah um speaking of of money <laughs> um <laughs> I know we do plan for sponsorship packages, but I don't have the latest and greatest in that. So, so what, what's the deal? Yep. So that's, we've just kind of worked through the what we think we're going to be able to offer sponsors because that is kind of dependent on what platform we use. So it's taken us a bit of time to get all of that information together. Mm -hmm. And what we're planning to have to have is like a gold, silver, bronze yeah. uh, tiered approach. But we're also looking at having some uh, community sponsors and individual sponsors as well, which will be a bit uh, lower. But so that's more for people who, um, want to contribute financially but not able to contribute at the scale of being a, a formal sponsor mm -hmm. um, and so yeah they'll be the they'll, we'll be announcing those shortly as well yeah I like this specifically because it's the first time that the community is is uh, taking real efforts to finance itself uh, basically of course the conference and and maybe some giveaways or so but 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 Going forward, of course, we, there'll be much more. It's going to be a much bigger picture to, if we uh, want to have funding for the project and not depend on, on Acquia alone. Yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's why we started up the Open Collective, really, because we realized that we wanted to have greater transparency over the money coming in and going out that we bring in through Morticon and that would have been really really difficult to do within if all the money was going in and out of Acquia's financial mm. system mm. so the open collective is completely transparent you can see all the money coming in and going out all the invoices and everything mm. like that so um, I think that's going to be a really great bonus for the community and it allows the community to be much more um, yeah managing its own Uh, budget its own finances and, and also understanding how much it actually costs to run the community <laughs> yeah. you know like the cost of our infrastructure and mm. so on and so forth yeah but but that's uh, only getting better over time and uh, from, from speaking to various people I, I do know that that uh, many are keen to get some of the limited uh, gold or silver silver uh, packages um, and to, to be present there at the con so I'm, I'm optimistic about all that. And the, yeah, the yeah, I think it's a great opportunity, isn't it, for, for anyone who's involved in Mortic to show their support of the community. Yeah. And we're trying as much as we can to really make sure we, to really make sure that we um, are able to promote those people who yeah, do give, get involved as sponsors. Give value back, exactly. Yeah, yeah. like it. Uh, and what I like most yeah. is that we are planning i think we still plan to have real t-shirts although it's a virtual event is that right yeah so we're, we're we're going a slightly different way than most conferences with this and what we're planning to do is to be able to give people a gift card to use in our swag shop so that they can order the swag that they want and we will have some special t-shirts probably for this event like a you know like a morticon special mm. special edition t-shirt uh But if you don't like it, you could also buy a Mortic T-shirt, for oh, example. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So and it one. also raises 
it also raises awareness of the swag shop, which I think oh, people point. don't necessarily know about unless yeah. they know. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Good. Okay. Uh, well, what 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 else is there to say? I, I'm not sure. The other thing maybe is that we're thinking about ho holding a day before the event as a kind of training day of of kinds, mm -hmm. um, some kind of tutorial or course qualification we're not quite sure yet so we're looking into that but as a way of bolting on some opportunities to actually formalize your learning in mortic um so that's being discussed at the moment um ideally it would be managed by a third party a sponsor um because oh, we don't have the the team to look at that ourselves okay. so that would be some 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 entity some some company that that that, that that are in the business of, of whatever, either doing uh, training or, or modic, and they, they would organize and run the entire day. Is that right? Yeah, that's one of the things we're looking at. Or maybe it could be shared by a couple of organizations, yeah. like one did the morning sessions and one did the afternoon sessions. We haven't kind of yeah. finalized it yet. And I guess that leads on to the other challenge, that we have very, very few people who are actually managing the team to organize Morticon. Okay. So we definitely would be up for anyone who'd be interested in helping organize the event and managing it um, because it is a community event. So it will only happen if we have people giving up their time to help us. Oh, yeah. So if you are interested, um, I mean, you, the listener, uh, we, we did mention the, the Slack channel already. Uh, that's, that's, uh, ooh, that's, Probably the, the TNT yeah. hyphen community channel to go, right? Or just get in touch with Ruth and, and she'll, she'll add you to the right yeah. list. Yeah. I mean, we do actually have the main Morticon channel, hash Morticon. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's a public channel. So folk mm -hmm. could probably join there and um, say that you're interested in helping. Yeah. So in any context, whether you're interested in helping organize it or if you'd like to know more about being a track chair, you know, any yeah. of those questions yeah or if you would like to uh, be a sponsor or specifically if, if you consider uh, being part of the training day idea yeah yeah you get in touch now otherwise it's gonna yeah. be too late soon and the other thing i was going to mention is that the 3.2 um release so mm. the freeze date for that would have been the 15th which is right before multicon mm. we're probably going to shift that back so that we can run some kind of sprint after the event so maybe on the 18th 19th mm. to finalize the 3.2 release so that's the next um feature-based release so that will be a really exciting thing to get involved with as well if you've never been involved in the nuts and bolts of how a release actually happens. We'll need developers, but also people who are marketers, people who would like to help us write copy, create visuals. Uh, yeah. So there's the opportunity to get involved with that release. Yeah, maybe um, we can give a starting Morticon. point as a, in, in, as a talk during the Morticon and then go on the next day. That, that's well, we're going to look at a, an entire Mortic, Mortic week. <laughs> Week of yeah, Mordic. absolutely. And the release date for that would be the 20th. Well, we would release this uh, release candidate mm. probably fairly soon after Multicon, and then the the stable release would be the 23rd of November. Okay. So it's an opportunity to actually be part of the release as well. Yeah, and I we'll have it, lots of people to handhold and help you get started. Okay. I call it the week of Mordic, the VOM. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. I don't want to end on that note. <laughs> Tell us more, Ruth. What else? <laughs> uh, what else have we got going on? Uh, I don't uh, know. Maybe, maybe that's just it uh, about Mordicon. It's, it's, we're now on September 11th. Um, yeah. So it's like one, two, three months ago. Uh, three, three months to go. No, uh -huh. it's two months to go. Oh my god! <laughs> Two months to go. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so but I'm really looking so forward to all that, especially what you said about the inspiration that you can get out of Morticon. Any event like this is always great, and I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, me too. I'm super excited mm. and really looking forward to learning more as well because the more I get involved in the community, the more I find things that I literally had no idea existed. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And this kind of event is a great way of learning from other people who use Mautic. And it really does help you accelerate the way that you use it yourself. And it's a starting point for networking too. So, so. Absolutely, yeah. All lights and green. (laughs) Good, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll let it go. Thank you so much for your time and for the insights too. And um, You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you, Ricky. Thank you. Bye-bye, Ruth. Bye. Yeah, I'd like to talk about the aspect of going global. It has its, I don't not say up and downs, but the, the thing about the time zones, the, I think it's manageable. It's better to have like the problem of different time zones than coming from different countries and having to care about visa and yeah <laughs> just like we talked about in in the introduction yep. <laughs> going truly global is is a big win it is and uh yeah we will have to manage the time zone i think things. we will do that <laughs> yeah okay um so dates coming up um we have nothing new coming up we uh, i'd like to remind people of the meetups that are out there and and the modic.org slash events page where they are listed um that includes for instance uh the lagos meetup up in nigeria mm-hmm. the one that toby is running yep. um now that we're virtual even there that means that it's open for everyone and we we have had a lot of Super interesting. Oh, that's your word normally. Sorry, Leon. <laughs> um, a lot of really, really interesting talk, talks there recently. Um, the recordings are available too, and maybe I should link to the recordings. Maybe um, yeah, you should. And so so people can listen into that. Um, and yeah, thumbs up for Toby for going doing such a w- good work of getting good speakers on board and managing the Nigerian and global community at, at a time. <laughs> yeah. Good. Other than that. We have um, a schedule released for upcoming Modic releases and the related sprints. So, for instance, the 3.2 release is currently scheduled for November 23rd, which is pretty close to uh, the Modicon, and the sprint is also. And uh, as we said, we might (coughs) shuffle the dates a little bit to have a sprint right next to Modicon. So even the release date might be shifted for a day or two but in general you have a really good outline now for every major and minor release or or, or other patch and minor release mm-hmm. of Mordic going forward yeah yeah this and so much more in the show notes As and always. that also concludes <laughs> number 17 of the Mordicon yeah yeah unless you have more for us mm, no Hmm. <laughs> and we're done for today. Okay, thanks for listening. Um, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, absolutely do it now. So Subscribe. you won't miss a beat going like, forward. <laughs> share with your friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, subscribe for them and for your partner too and everyone. <laughs> okay, thanks. Take care. Stay safe and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.